This here is the hardware setup that we have put together. So for the hardware, um, starting from the microcontroller, we're using a PIC 18F4520. And from the port A of the PIC, which is this, you have a connection to the resistor network, which is this, and it's pulled up by the pull-up resistor that we find here. And then that connection goes all the way to the ZIF socket, which sits right at this point. And from there, we have the same connection, the resistor network, so the pull-up resistor and then going to the port D of the microcontroller. As we can see in the schematic all the way back to the port D. And now there's another set of connection here and here and that is meant for these ICs. Now, what these ICs are meant for is that they're meant to supply power to the power pins of the device under test. But in this case, we don't have these four ICs. The IC, we don't have them in the lab, so we're not using them. So what we had to do was to directly connect the power the, um, to the VCC of the device under tests through this and then to the ground of the device under test. Now for the devices we have, we all have 14 pin devices. Actually we have um, another device which is 16 pin but because there is no way to establish a power supply you know, through this we had to um, leave it out. So we have the 14 pin devices and all of them have the ground and then the VCC on pin number 7 and pin number 14. All of them. So that was why we had to make a direct connection. And then we also have the Bluetooth, um, Bluetooth which connects to the Bluetooth device. And then we have uh, the set of LEDs and also we have the buzzer okay now we're going to the test proper we have a collection of devices to test and those devices we have the devices that are, the axes that are good and then the faulty ones where we've um, you know disconnected their their pins. So first we have to establish the Bluetooth connection. So through the Bluetooth terminal, which is currently not connected, we try to connect and as you see the, the light blinks from the Bluetooth to the device, meaning that there is no connection. So when we Try to connect. You can see it's connected, connected, and the light isn't blinking, so which means a connection has been established. Now to bring up our menu, we just have to reset the microcontroller. Okay, so we have our menu. So our menu function says test and identify so first we want to identify our IC we'll start from the good ICs so that's a 7400 so as you can see it's connected all the way down and this pin which is the seventh pin represents the ground pin so this is how it is in a commercial IC testers the yeah, um, chips are connected all the way down and um, we 
We then I try to identify the IC by pressing two. Device identified. And then the green LED comes on. I can see that the identification matches the device we had plugged in. Yes. So now we can test that same device. Yeah. We press one. Okay, it's any. Um, we press any button, it goes back to the main menu. So we select one, and that's um, seven four zero zero, which is number two. And we can see all four elements that this device is made up of. The Pass. Past. Therefore, we get no buzzer and a green indicator light that mm -hmm. is a fully functioning device. Yeah. Then. The next is um we can try a fully functioning seven four zero zero next. Seven four zero two now. zero two. Okay. Yes. Okay. So we try to identify I see. We can see an operation in progress it results in a blinking blue light. The green one indicates that we have found our device. Okay, now we try to test. We go back to the main menu, um, test the IC. So that's a third. And again, as expected, a fully working device, green light. Next. Moving on, the next device, 7404. We identify this device. So it's identified as 7404. And then any button press to return back to the menu. We select one. So we are testing an IC. Yes, this sir. time we want to choose option number four. Yeah. It all passes. And that's another working chip. Yeah. Next we're going to test. Seven four zero eight. Okay. Please start. And identify this device. Okay. Let's test now. Seven four zero eight, which is option five. It all passed. Again. Yes. Next. Seven four thirty two. Okay. Connect that. Let's try to test it just by selecting it from the menu without identifying. That's seven four three two. That's option six. Okay. And again. Fully working as expected. Okay. Last one now. Seven four eighty six.
So we try to identify this device. The device is identified as 7486. We go back to the main menu and we test it. Option 7. It all passed. So now we are going to test a faulty device. To start off with, it is going to be the 7400. And you can see on our diagram here, pin number 4 is the one that we have removed. So we expect element number 2 to show us failed. Press 1 to test. As expected, the red LED turns on and then the buzzer sound is also on. And if we attempt to identify this chip? And we can also see the second elements failed as we expect. We try to identify. Okay. Device not identified. I'm just waiting for the focus here. Device not identified as due to its failure, to its fault, this chip does not match any of the ones that we have in the memory of our system. And the uh, LED also turns on, red LED. Bother. Next, we have a faulty. Should be a seven four zero two. And you can see the pins that we have removed as shown here. We expect the first two elements to show up as faulty. Tests. Press one to test. Choose um, the device seven four zero two. So option option three. So as expected, elements one and two have failed, and then the buzzer and the red LED turns on. Okay. Next. We have a 7404, the failures are shown on the diagram, elements 2 and 5 are faulty. If we test the 7404 which is Option 4, element 2, element 5, as you can see. Okay. And then we try to identify. Let's see if the, the system can identify.
Okay. Just as before, a faulty chip does not match anything in memory. Next, we're going to be testing a 7408. What is important to note in this case is that it is the VCC pin that has been removed from the device. Due to this, the entire device should not operate correctly. Which selects seven four zero eight as we expect all the elements fail because there is no um, the power pin is not connected. We also try to identify So the device is not identified as expected. Okay. Now next, we're going to try a 7432. With this particular pattern of failures, with this device we only expect element 2 to pass. We test seven four three two option six. Okay, so as we expect, just element two passed the test, and we show that the device itself is faulty. And if we try to Okay, if you try to identify. And the last chip we're going to test today is a 7486. Focus. Maybe we won't focus. Mm -hmm. Even though only one of the elements has a faulty pin, the ground of the whole device is not connected, therefore, we expect everything to fail. So, select one to test. That's seven. Yeah, so we have all the elements filling. Okay. And then let's see if we can try to identify this chip. This device does not match anything yeah. in memory. Okay. So we've been able to test collection of uh, ICs, both the good and the defective ones.